Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Will you truly rejoice in the spirit, everybody? Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with your voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you for bringing us into your presence where there is fullness of joy and to your right hand where there are pleasures forever. For bringing us today, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. For all the victories and triumphs of testimonies of last week, we give you thanks. For the wonders you are performing today, we give you thanks. For the greater things we shall see in the course of the week, we are still thanking you. We thank you every day and forever. We bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Blessed be your name, Lord. And blessed be your name, Lord. And all the saints of God, wave your hand and shout, I bless God. Amen. One more time, if you can, please. And look at your neighbors, your right and left. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please give God a big hand and take your seat. Praise God. Fortune is my portion 2024. Congratulations. Amen and amen. By way of reminder, our prophetic focus for this month is God still works wonders through praise. And as I welcome every one of us this morning, I want to assure you that wonders will not cease in your life. God still works wonders through praise. Please understand, God is a worker. God is what? Worker. Jesus said, my father walk it, either to and I walk. If God is not working, everything will have broken down in your life. Paul the apostle said, God is at work in us, both to will and to do of his God pleasures. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. God is at work. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do. Things are working for you because God is working in you. But God works when we put him to work. It takes a man to put God to work. You have to work something or on something for God to work. And particularly the subject of praise. When we are praising God, God is working. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22, as they began to walk in praise. And when they began to sing, look at that, and to praise, the Lord walked by setting ambushment against the children of Ammon. When did he set the ambushment? When they began to sing. So wherever praise exists, wonders don't cease. Wonders multiplies when our praise increases. Keep praising him to put him to work. Keep praising him to put him to work. The series of teaching every Sunday, and this is part 2C, we took 2A in first service, powerful teaching through our resident pastor, second service and now this third service. Engaging the wonders of praise is the series of teaching. Engaging the wonders of praise. Again, that means putting praise to work for wonders to occur. Putting praise to work to trigger wonders. In an earlier service, we try to break down 
the subject of thanksgiving, praise, and worship. They are interwoven, yet they are distinct. Definable, describable, in approach, function, and whatever. It's just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one, but distinct functions. What is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is appreciating the act. Because God performs his acts through his hand. His right hand and holy hand has gotten him the victory. So God performs his act through his hand. So we are thanking God for his hand at work. That's thanksgiving. So when we thank God, we are moving his hand. We are moving his hand. And you can see a man's hand without seeing his body. But praise is the celebration of the person of God. The person of God. His personality. We are praising him because of who he is. We are praising him not because we want to see his hand, but we want to see him. You know, meeting a man is different from seeing his hand. He can send you money, one million, and you go and tell him, I saw your hand. But you know, after seeing the hand of a man, you say, can I, can I see you? The person. You want to feel his person. And that's what we do in praise. And a person is represented in three ways. The identity of someone is known in the following ways in his physical being, in the words of his mouth, and in the name that he bears. And that's why if you check the scriptures, we praise God for who he is. I am that I am. Exodus 3, 4. Malachi 3, 6. 6. I am the Lord. I change. So we are praising him because he's unchangeable. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus the same yesterday. Today and forever. He is the same today. And he will never change. We are praising him for who he is. Then we are praising him based on his name. His name that produces miracles. We need to understand this. We praise his name so that he can perform his wonders. It's a good thing to give thanks unto God and to sing praises to thy name. Psalm 92 verse 1, thy name. We praise his person, we praise his name. And number three, we praise his word. The efficacy of his word. The integrity of his word. The everlasting nature of his word. The enduring power in his word. And that's what we are focusing on at this moment. And thirdly, we worship him to imbibe his nature. We worship him. When you get to the realm of worship, you are getting direct in touch with his nature. Many people don't realize this. That was the realm that Moses reached on the top of the mountain when his face began to glow. He was, in worship, we carry God. We carry God. Very few believers get to that realm. The realm of worship. Where you see the smallness of yourself and the bigness of God. It brings you face to face with God. Worship. Communion with God. Interaction with God. You are not asking for things. 
you, you are just beholding his face in worship. Say loud, amen. amen. Many believers are not patient to enter into that realm. They're in a hurry. It's the realm where you know God as God knows you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you, Lord. In his presence, I am content. In your presence, I am content. In your presence, here is life. Expressions of your joy, revelations of your power and might. Oh, in your presence I can bring a love some offering. I'm in the presence of You are just there worshiping him. You get lost. Just like a man and his wife when they are alone. Privacy is the intent of worship. Privacy with God is the outcome of worship. In modern society, you don't see where a man and a woman are having affairs in the public. Not like we have in this uh, generation where people are interacting as dogs in the open. It's usually in privacy. So we have spiritual intercourse with God in worship where you get so satisfied with God, you don't find any error in God. You know why many people find fault in God? They are not in worship. Get to that realm and keep enjoying God. Say loud, amen. amen. Well, back to our point. We are looking at the fact that praise focuses on the integrity of the word of God and the word of God is either in written or spoken form. As Bible scholars tell us, logos or rema. That is, you are not moved by the happenings, but by what is written. David says, Psalm 54, 6 verse 4, 56, 4 and verse 10. In God I will praise his word. Somebody say with me, I will praise his word. Let me hear you please. In God I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. And in verse 10, in God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. So there are moments when you are just praising him in line with his word. God cannot lie. His word is surely come to pass. Huh? His word will come to pass. God cannot lie. His word is coming come to pass. Come on. Amen. You are praising his word. Not minding the happenings around you. Which wants to prevail over your soul. And we need to get to this realm. Every time you appear to be overwhelmed by circumstances and you cannot even pray again, enter into singing. You will see your faith revive. Singing is faith revival. Singing revives your faith. Praises inject your doubt and blow it into faith. Those who are praising God don't doubt God. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That means nothing can shake the word of God. Nothing can shake. So when you begin to praise the word, you are simply giving stability to your faith. 1 Peter chapter 1 Verses 23 to 25. Being born again, not of 
corruptible sea, but incorruptible by the word of God. What about the word of God? Which liveth and abideth forever. It liveth and abideth forever. Other things will die. Other things will cease, but the word abides forever. Read furthermore. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. That is anything you see, they are temporal, momentary. The grass wither it, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. How long does the word endure? Now, to say the word of God endure is one thing, to now put it forever. The word endure means it lasts. And it lasts forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The word of the Lord endures forever. Say loud amen. amen. That is to say no matter how long any situation of your life is, the word of God will outlive it. And how do you make it happen? By praising his word. Exalting his word above your circumstances. Lifting up his word. Promoting his word. Magnifying his word. Bring that medical report on one side and bring the word on the other side. And war in between them. Bring that your situation down. You are living in a room, face, to, face may I face you. And remember what God said. And start praising what God said. God said you shall be head and not the tail. God said you shall be above and not beneath. God said he will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Start praising his word. The circumstances you are going through will soon disappear. <laughs> Say loud, amen. amen. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there before. Luke 21. Verse 33, Jesus said, Heaven and heart shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. How? Before heaven and earth came, the word was in existence. In the beginning was the word. And everything was created by the word. Let there be, let there be heaven. Let there be heart. Let there be, let there be. The word that created the thing cannot die before the thing. <laughs> what are you talking about that medical science says you will not you have cancer the word existed before it including the medical practitioners they came to meet God here they will live and God will still be alive amen you had testimony this afternoon I mean this morning somebody said what did she call the name you forgot he shared the testimony. One lady shared testimony. Huh? H. Pylori. H. Pylori. <laughs> it sounds like a name from, uh, from somewhere in Taraba State. <laughs> H. Pylori. And the word came to her. Go and return with your testimony. Because you don't have it. Say it, I don't have it. And she said it, I don't have it. Say it again, I don't have it. She said, I don't have it. Went for test. And the H... Pylori disappeared. Amen. <laughs> Raise your hand. I declare to you that the word of God dismantles every affliction in your life. Amen. The word of God terminates that invisible battle in your life. Amen. The word of God endure it forever. So when we are praising the word, we are steering the word. We are steering the content of the word when we are praising his word. Say loud, amen. amen. Also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, hear what Jesus said. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law, the word, till all be fulfilled. All must be fulfilled. Ah! I'm saying to you this morning from the word of God, Whatever God has said concerning you, he will do it. Yeah. He's not slack concerning his promises. 
You may not see it, but it is coming. I say it is coming. I say it is coming. I say it is coming. But you need to sustain your faith by praising the word. Example. Genesis 18.10 God said to Abraham and his wife, I will certainly, ah, I will verily, like Jesus will say, verily, verily, I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. This is what the word needs. It needs time. Just like every seed needs time. It is in that process of time that people's faith shakes. It is in process of time that Satan comes to tempt you. Is he going to come as he said? Say me, God is coming. I didn't hear you. According to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it. Say me, I hear it. In the tenth door, which was behind him. And verse, 20, verse 11. Now, as at the time God said it, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Hope lost. And it has ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. That means no ovulation, ovaries, no more production, uterus, dead, menopause has crossed to octopus. That was a time. Hush. God is asking me to tell somebody here, you think the time is gone. You think it is over with you. I heard our pastor say, the first service, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Raise your hand, please. Every form of hopelessness around you is giving way to a new beginning. Yeah. And so, in chapter 21, verse 1, and we take verse 2 along. And the Lord visited Sarah. How? Because he said so. He came back to say so. He came back to do so. He came first to say so. In chapter 18, he came to say so. And in chapter 21, he came to do so. God doesn't speak to us to create excitement. He came because he will come back. And the Lord did, did, did unto Sarah as he has spoken. He does according to his word. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived as God said. And bear Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time. Set time. This is what people cannot wait for. They can't wait for the time. Satan will come to tempt you within the period. Between the time God said so and did so. Harabala Agriash. Raise your hand please and say with me I believe. That whatever God said, he will come back to do it. He said so. He will do so. He said so. He will do so. He has said concerning you that you shall not die but live. So no matter the threats of death, with evidences of medical conjunctions, God said it and I believe it and that settles me. Amen. Amen. They say you will not have a child. But is that what God said? He didn't say so. He didn't say so. He said, thou shalt be blessed above all people. And there shall be none barren among you, even among your cattle. It may take a while, but he said so. 
and he's coming to do it. He said so. He said you will build houses and inhabit it. So you will not die as a tenant. He said so. And he will do so. You are a squatter now. That's a landlord passing through a passage. I passed through there before. So I know what I'm talking about. I passed through there before. Let's begin to take God for his word. When we are shaken, let's take stabilizers. Praise is stabilizer of faith. Praise. How did it happen to Abraham? Romans chapter 4, from verse 17. He began to believe. Just like all of us begin to believe. As it is written. Say with me, as it is written. This should be your greatest concern. Every time you are confronted with negative circumstances, find out what is written. What is written. Because that is what endures. As it is written. God said, I have made you, not I will make you. Your present circumstance is temporal, momentary, is a passage. God said, look beyond the circumstance to what I have made you. I have made you. I have made you. God has completed the work in you. It's only a matter of time. I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who, as a result of his belief, quickened the dead. They told him he was dead. And called those things which be not as though they were. And verse 18, who against hope believed in hope? Before God came, all hope was gone. Were dead. No longer as it should be with other women. But they believed in hope. Because God's word gives hope. God's word gives hope. Against hope, believed in hope. That he might become. That he might become. Watch it. What you don't hope for, you don't become. Hope for a better tomorrow. Hope, hope, hope. Don't destroy your hope. Don't say, can anything good see come out of me? Hope, hope, hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, according to that which was spoken, according to that which was spoken. According, please begin to gauge your life according to what is spoken. According to, not according to what's happening. Not according, according to the economy of your nation. Not according to the turbulence around the world. According to what is written. What is written concerning your protection, he will give you a charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. A thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand. But there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. According to what is written. According to what is spoken, so shall thy seed be. And as it is with every human, verse 19, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now that was dead. She knew medically it was dead, but considered it not. When they give you medical report, we are not saying it is not a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. They said they found something in your blood. It's a medical fact. But don't consider it. Somebody was with my wife and I a few days ago. She said she's losing weight. She doesn't know why she's losing weight. And medical concerns were coming up. And my wife said, take your mind off it. Simple. You have done all you could medically, and you are still losing weight. Take your mind off it. There are things you need to take your mind off before it sticks to you. I've shared this testimony too many times. The doctor told me my son we have medical issue. I took my mind off it to the extent I didn't tell my wife. Because it's not part of the bargain. What the scripture told me is that the seed of the righteous shall be mighty. So I have a, I have a mighty child, not a sickly child. I have an AA child, not an SS. SS means seriously, seriously sick. AA means actively alive. The facts are there, but marry it with the truth 
and the truth will swallow the fact. Say loud, amen. amen. Staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith by giving glory to God. Strong in the faith. So the strength of faith is in praising God. Praise is life support to faith. Praise. I want to urge all of you who sing, please sing with understanding. You are inspiring people's faith. You are giving life and hope to people's weakened faith. Singing is complement to preaching. Songs are strengtheners of words. Abraham was praising God. Was praising God. Sarah was judging God faithful. Hebrews 11, 11. And in the process, their faith was strengthened. Time will test your faith. But songs of praise will strengthen your faith during the time your faith is being tested. All of us are tested. Didn't God say it? The enemy will come to ask you, why are you like this? No money to buy bread? Did you not say God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ? Don't answer him. Just sing. Sing. There are times you shouldn't answer the devil. You are wasting your time. I give with him. Just sing to flush him out. Yes. You sing to flush him out. When you are singing, doubt is sinking. When you are singing, faith is rising and doubt is sinking. We are praising him because he cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Not a servant of God that he should repent. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And when I bless, no one can reverse it. God is not a man that he should lie. Not a son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23, 19. Choir, can you sing that song? Not yet. <laughs> Amen. It's an old-fashioned song. I'd remarked in an earlier service, God told us to sing new songs, but he didn't tell us to forget the old ones. We mix the old and the new. You know, when you want to get somebody drunk, you mix some wine together. Amen. <laughs> so when you want to get drunk in the spirit, you bring the old and the new together. Say loud, Amen. Titus chapter 1 verse 2, God who cannot lie. So praise is covenant trigger for signs and wonders. You are singing, you are triggering the act of God. Praising God moves God to perform his words. So when we are praising, we are waking God up according to his word. When we are praising his word, we are waking him up to perform his word. That's why faith or praise is a vital evidence of faith. How do I know you have faith? It shows in the way you are praising his word. It shows. It shows. Praise him therefore habitually. And you begin to enjoy wonders as a lifestyle. High praise provokes divine intervention that silences our enemies. Psalm 8 verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained the strength. Babies become men through praise. Strengthen. Praise strengthens people in the place where doubt weakens people. Praise his word. You become stronger than your enemy. According to Psalm 18 verse 17, David became stronger than his enemy, including Goliath as he was praising God, challenging Goliath. When we are praising God, we are challenging our enemies. We are confronting our mockers 
and invoking judgment on them. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14, David praised God. The wife that mocked him, Michael, became the first and the only woman that, whose prayer for fruitfulness was not heard. She mocked David. She became stricken with barrenness. Raise your hand, please. Everyone who mocks your face will end up with this order of plague. In the precious name of Jesus. You know, the people of Jericho, they were mocking the children of Israel. As they were marching and praising God and blowing their trumpet, they said, what can these ones do? Can you see them? Oh, they are just playing. Ah, is that how to fight? Blowing trumpet? On the seventh day, <laughs> the walls came down. On the seventh day, the walls came down. Raise your hand again. I declare all your mockers will see your making. In the precious name of Jesus. So may thank you, Jesus. I'm very importantly, please listen to this. Especially for all of us who are givers. Sometimes the enemy just rises against the inflow of your harvest. What do you do? When you have given and you are still giving, and it seems there is no harvest. The harvest is there. It's there. The enemy is trying to block it. What do you do? Praise him. Praise him. Let the people praise you, O Lord. And what will happen? The hearth will bring forth. Psalm 67, verses 5 and 6 and 7. Let all the people praise thee. Then, say with me then. What will happen? Shall the hearth yield? The word yield means release. Your increase for your giving is about to be released. Don't ask questions. Just pray. God knows what to do. He knows what to do. In Mark chapter 4, I think 23 and 24, he said the kingdom of God is as a man who went to plant his seed. After planting the seed, he goes to sleep and wake up. He does not know how. Get it down. I think 26, 27. As if a man should cast seed in the ground, as if you gave. And verse 27, should sleep. When you give, go and sleep. If you truly gave. Just like if a farmer, a farmer doesn't sleep in the farm to check whether the seed is coming out. He goes home to sleep. <laughs> and begin to tell his friends, the harvest this year will be great. Oh. I planted four acres against two acres last year. He begins to boastfully announce the yield. That's what you should do after you have given. Go and sleep. Rise night and day. And then the seed should spring and grow up in a way that you do not know. How? Verse 28. For the hearth bringeth forth fruit of ourself. The heart knows what to do once it takes your seed. God knows what to do while you plant your seed. While you, he knows the next thing to do. He is the one who said, give and it shall be given to you. He can't break his word. First, the blade. Then, the air. And after that, the full come. Process of time. Singing and praising God. It is with joy that to bring in your harvest. Joel chapter 1 verses 11 to 12. Hebrews 13, 15. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. All your enemies shall be judged today. In the precious name of Jesus. Now, I declare that every invisible barrier around your life be broken down. Now, what do we mean by invisible? Very important. Sometimes we hear some words we just assume. Clarification begins with definition. What is invisible? Things that cannot be seen. 
things that cannot be suspected. Sources you don't know where troubles are coming from. Invisible. And that also tells us that there are things beyond what we see with our physical eye. We have the visible and we have the invisible. You can fight physically the visible, but you can't fight the invisible because you cannot see it. And that is the world in which we live. We live in the world where things happen that we cannot understand, we cannot explain, we cannot fight, except we are transported to that realm. Our enemies live in that realm, the realm of the negative invisible world. Please note that we also have access to the invisible world. There are mysteries of the devil. We also have the mysteries of God. You have the mysteries of iniquity. We have the mystery of righteousness. You have the mystery of destruction. We have the mystery of living above them. Jesus said, concerning an evil planted in a man's farm, he said, an enemy has done this. Matthew 13, 24, 28. An enemy. So there are things enemies go to do. Enemies operate in the realm of invisibility when you are sleeping. That's why you have to stay awake. You have to stay awake spiritually. Business is down. Career is off. Job opportunities closing. Open shop. Nobody is coming there to buy Children are falling sick. Finances are closing up. And you are explaining as a Nigerian, the economy is very wonderful. You know, our president is not sensitive. You are wasting your time. Wasting your time. Explanation cannot change situation. No. It is understanding of the spiritual atmosphere that brings about a turnaround. And what is it? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. Hear this very well. Although we are walking in the flesh physically, in the visible, we do not war as people in the flesh. You have to understand that. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. There are strongholds of the enemy. You turn to right, no movement. Turn to the left. You want to jump up, they won't let you jump up. Because they are pressing you down with charms, with enchantments, with evil speaking, with schemings of men, with magical powers. Pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the plan of God for your life and bringing them into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's the authority you have. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 sheds more light. Or verse 12. For we wrestle. We fight, we are not fighting against flesh. Please understand, first of all, that we are not in form fear, we are in warfare. We are in what? Warfare. Let me hear you. Warfare. Say it like a soldier. Warfare. One more time, please. Warfare. Gentility cannot win in this world. In this kingdom, you need to be violent to possess your possession. The violent take it by force, the gentle lose it. The violent ticket it. You can't take it without. Fight the good fight of faith that you may lay hold on what belongs to you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Jumping from one place to another, looking for contact. Who do you know in presidency? Who do you know in ministry of finance? There is no crime in knowing people. But you can go round and round and round them for four years till their time is over. The job is deceiving you. Come tomorrow. 
you know, it's one palm sec that needs to sign it. And many of them are loaded with deception and lies. They even tell you if you bring one million, your 10 million will come out. You're running escasketa. When you can engage in spiritual power, <laughs> they say somebody won't pay you. Write his name down. Place anointing on his head. Put him on strange headache. He will soon call you. This is a spiritual world, though. It's a spiritual warfare. You are looking too gentle. You are making contact with the physical when you should connect with heaven. We are fighting against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Wickedness. Wicked. They, don't have, they don't have mercy. Wickedness. The people you are smiling with, uh, they are, many of them are demons incarnated. They are smiling to you, but they are wishing you evil. They put things on their tongue to speak to you. They wear dresses already soaked in different things to appear to you. And here you are, you are greeting them casually. Against wickedness in high places. Wickedness. They come to rob your child's head and turn him into a prey. Spiritual wickedness. We are in such war. Such world of war. But the good news is we are above them. Amen. Say loud amen. amen. We have our redemptive rights to clear them off our paths of destiny. Say to me, I clear them off. Say again, I clear them off. You need a mentality to do that. You are seated far above them. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 to 6. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Ye are of God. Say with me, I am of God. I am of God. Say it again. Whose are you? And you have overcome them. God has ordained you to be on top of them. How? Because greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sing with me, everybody. Greater is he that is in me. Yes. Greater is he that is in me. Oh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sing again now. Greater is he that is in me. Oh, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wake up every day without consciousness. Everywhere you go. To be more specific now, what are some practical steps you can take to subdue these invisible barriers? First of all, you need to change your status. Now listen to this. If you are not a child of God, you are under. God first, Satan next, you under. But when you give your life to Jesus, he takes you from under and puts you on top. How do we know that? Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Very clear word. When you are born again, he hath delivered you from the power, from the influence of the power of darkness and has translated you. He has changed your level. So me, my level is changed. He has sent us into the kingdom of his dear son. He brought us into the class of Jesus that cannot be confronted. He brought us into a class that the only time negative thing will happen to you is when you drop from the level of Christ. Say with me, I am in the level of Christ. I cannot suffer crisis. That's what happens when you are born again. If you are not born again, you are under his control. You are only waiting for your turn to be turned to pepper soup. Satan the wicked will soon reach you except you give your life to Jesus. That's why he says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Don't neglect salvation. Don't ignore this call. If you are not born again, change your level. 
give your life to Christ. It doesn't cost you nothing. It is cheaper to live with Christ than to live with the devil. Satan is a wrecker. He's not a joker. You follow the devil, you pay for it. You follow God, you don't pay, but God pays you for it. Why are you wasting your time? Why are you having delight in drunkenness, in usage of drugs that is wrecking your destiny, sending you out of school? Why? Won't you think? Like the prodigal son. The prodigal son sat down one day. He said, for how long will I suffer like this? He was looking for food of pigs. They didn't allow him to eat. A man who was, is left his father's house and followed the devil. Stop following the devil. Come to your father's house. Satan doesn't pay you, but God pays you for salvation. Hebrews 6, 9. The things that accomplished salvation. Salvation is cheaper. Following God is cheaper. You lose contact with customers in making charms for you. You lose customer with people who are fake, selling drugs to you, selling you know, beer to you. You lose touch with them. Do you know, somebody told me, I don't know what it is right now, one bottle of beer will buy you several blocks to build your house. And you know how many people today who are enslaved drinking, they don't have a house. Won't you think? Won't you think? Won't you think? The money you are using for charms, Jesus is giving you everything free. And they call you to be saved. You are still saying, eh, I, 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 I didn't want to be saved. Uh, you kill yourself for nothing. Get saved to become safe. So if you are here this morning, you are not born again. When the call is made, you better run out. Run out. Rush out. Rush out from the devil. He's a wrecker. He turns people to jalopy. He makes you to become older than your age. All your teeth gone for drinking. Drinking burukutu and all of that. Drinking kankain and drinking all stuff. Why? You can run for your life. Run to Jesus. And he will save you. Say loud amen. Jesus will change your level when you are born again. Number two, keep walking in the light of his word. When you are born again, you become light. First Thessalonians chapter 5, all the way to 8. Salvation brings you into light. But beloved, we are pursued. Uh, 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 Ephesians, please. Chapter 5, verses, verses 5 to 8. For this ye know, Get that passage for me, please. First Thessalonians, rather. First Thessalonians, chapter 5. And verse 5. And to 8. Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of night, nor of dark. Once you are born again, you are translated from night, from darkness, into light. Therefore, let us not sleep. Stay awake spiritually, as do others. But let us watch and be sober, be vigilant. For they that sleep in the night, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So what do you do? Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Therefore, walk as children of light. Expand your light base. Expand your light capacity. For the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Get to the realm where darkness will just flee from you. Intensity of light will distance the devil away from you. Intensity of light will distance the devil away from you. Arise, shine, your light has come. Though there be thick darkness, the Lord shall shine upon you, because light has come into you. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Now, as the light increases, you keep walking by faith. Walk by faith. Because faith comes by the word, and the word increases our faith. Romans 10, 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Light increases our faith. And with faith, you quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, you are able to quench. Follow it very carefully. You get born again. You get light. You get faith. And faith delivers to you the sword of the spirit where you are able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. It is warfare. And you need faith to fight in order for you to lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou hast also been called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Say loud, amen. amen. Now, faith will now graduate to your speaking boldly against all forms of barriers on your part. Let me go over it again. When you get born again, you receive the word which is light, and the light of the word will produce faith in you, and that faith will deliver weapons in your hand, but that weapon will be triggered by your utterances. Your utterances. Luke 21, 15. God said, I've given you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries cannot resist nor can say. You can't be speaking and be losing. No. You don't speak to lose, you speak to win. David spoke to win. Joshua and Caleb spoke to win. Speakers are winners. Silence is synonymous to losing. Silence means I settle down. There is nothing I can do. Until your enemies hear you, they will not bow. Psalm 18, 44 and 45. Speak. Speak. And see what God will do. Say loud amen. As soon as they hear, they will bow. Open your mouth wide. And God said, leave it to me, I will feel it. Psalm 81, verses 10 to 14. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will condemn. How? By speaking. You speak, you speak. You speak to condemn your enemy. Faith is expressed via speaking. First, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I believe, wherefore I speak. If you are not speaking, you are not believing. To prove that you are believing, be speaking. Let me tell you, neighbor, speak. Believe. Tell somebody else. Believe. Another person, please. So, you see the process. Now, number five, keep serving God. Keep serving God. I was inspired earlier to say, those who bend to serve God, God will rise to fight for them. Bend to serve God, and God will rise to fight for you. Get busy serving him. You will get busy fighting your enemies. Say loud, amen. amen. Exodus 23, 25, 26, 27, 28. He said, it will make your enemies to flee before you. Thank you, Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things, including your defense, shall be added to you. Number six, keep responding to his leading. Let God guide you. If you fight in a wrong location, God cannot appear to defend you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Be under his guidance to enjoy his defense. You see, when God guides, God defends. He guided Isaac to the land of Philistines and he defended them there. They fought and fought against Isaac. And God kept defending and defending Isaac. When God directs, he defends. So get God's direction for anything you want to do. David, the defended, was David the directed. Lord, shall I go? Some of his men might have said, David, are you cowards today? David said, no, I'm not. I'm only getting direction. When you don't take steps, sometimes some people think you're a coward. You are simply waiting for his direction because you can't fight by yourself. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as long as he's one leading me, I shall fear no evil. Say loud, amen. amen. It's my prayer that from this day, you will enjoy divine guidance. Amen. And finally, engage a lifestyle of praise to secure God's presence for your defense. When he's with you, all invisible barriers clear off. Who are thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? That shall be brought low. So let God guide you and keep engaging in praise to secure his presence so as to get him to
to keep fighting your battles for you. Did you get anything this morning? Give God a big hand for it, please. God is the one who gave his word. Now, we'll be blessing the communion shortly. But should you be here, please? You know you've not given your life to Jesus. Please, open your heart to him. It's never late to come to Jesus. Rich or poor, he will take you as you are. Rich Zacchaeus called on Jesus. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to your house. The hopeless called on him, including the thief on the cross. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. It's never late. Whatever you are seated tonight, this morning, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I don't want to be wayward again. I've eaten enough of pig's food. I want to be saved. I want to return back to God. I have paid so much following the devil. I want God to pay me now for following him. You want to receive this prayer? You lack peace, you lack joy in your heart, which are evidences of salvation, and you want Jesus to save you. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and start coming to the altar right now. Come to the altar. Come and receive salvation. Come and receive salvation. Come and receive salvation. Jesus wants to save you just as you are. No one is too bad to be saved. In case your mind is telling you you are too bad, or you are hearing the devil telling you, ah, no, 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 it's not for people like you. Jesus saves he saves the most wretched sinner. Or you are here this morning, you are backsliding, you are getting off the faith gradually. Satan is deceiving you, trying to entice you to come out of the faith. Don't listen to him. Return back to Jesus this morning or this afternoon. Wherever you are, the call is for you. Come to the altar. Come to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, a big hand as we expect those who need to come to quickly come right now. I want to be saved. I want to be born again, young or old. Especially my young friends, don't let the devil take over your life when you are young. It will lead to regret in your future. The earlier you surrender your life to Jesus like I did as a teenager, the better for you. Respond to Jesus. Respond. If a child is coming, let the child come. You don't know God, what God has spoken to him. If you know you have not been born again, if God saves children, then he can save anyone. He can save anyone. Jesus doesn't turn back anyone. I perceive there are still many of us here. You are seated there. You are watching. Satan is telling you, don't go. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your destiny. He wants to destroy your life. I know you ought to be here. Your mind is telling you you ought to be in the front here. You are there seated. Something is telling you, stand up. Don't hesitate. Jump up right now. Take that step. Make your decision. Decision makes you a different person. Listen to me, please. Decision makes you different. Don't be in the pool of others. Don't try to sit down like others. Single yourself out. I'm talking to someone here right now. Make your decision. Leave the devil behind. This is your day. You have 30 more seconds. If you are coming, take that step. Quickly come. Quickly come. Meanwhile, all of us, let's rise to our feet as we take the blessing of the communion. If you are coming, take that step right now. Now, those of you in the front here, please lift up your right hand and say with me, Lord Jesus. Make it loud. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me today. Give me new life. Make me your child. I say bye-bye to the things of the world. I say bye-bye to sin. I say bye-bye to the devil. Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Amen. Heavenly Father, we receive these souls into your kingdom. We destroy the power of sin and of the devil from their lives. We ask you write their names in the book of life and save them eternally in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For these wonderful souls, church, let us give Jesus a very big hand. God bless you. Please lead them to follow the church officials. I thought you are still clapping for the Lord. There is joy in heaven over every soul that is saved. Amen. Hallelujah. What you eat determines what you become. Amen? If you eat vitamins, I mean food with vitamins, you gain vitamins. If you eat food with protein, you gain protein. We are eating the food of Jesus to become like Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus was very strategic. Before he left, 
He wanted people who will live like him. And so in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, he took bread and said, this is my body. It's like saying to them, you have been wondering how I live this kind of life. If you take this one, you believe in like me. You believe in like Jesus. If you take the food of Jesus, you believe in like Jesus. John 6, 57. He said, as I live by the Father, I give you this bread so that you can live like me. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he that eateth me, even he shall live like, like me, he shall live by me. So as you take this food from Jesus, you will live by him. Amen. You will live like him. Amen. Sickness free, Amen. causes free, Amen. struggle free, Amen. poverty free, Amen. worry free, Amen. affliction free, Amen. danger free. Amen. Am I talking about someone here? Amen. That is what your portion is. Amen. The way Jesus could not be attacked, you will never suffer attack again. Amen. I say you will never suffer attack again. Amen. You will never suffer attack again. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody raise your hand and begin to declare, Jesus, I receive your life. I receive your strength. I receive your life. I receive your strength. Your order of life. Now this communion table is declared blessed in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This table is declared as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Take it and take his life. Get seated, please, everybody. Wait for your turn as you be directed. And uh, the choir will be ministering right now. Thank you.
No more around your life. Victory every day. Triumph every moment. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Before we close, we'd like to again respectfully invite those of you worshiping with us for the very first time in this church, Living Faith Church. Lokogoma. We love you, we respect you, and we'd like you to know that as we pray prayer for you around the altar. Wherever you are, please take a step, come to the altar here. With everything you came to church with, don't leave anything behind. If you came with children as well, please come along with them. Thank you, Jesus. Right at the moment they are coming in, all of us in the assembly, We'll be making our proclamation. Proclamation for the week. Proclamation for victory. Total victory over invisible barriers. You may not know where they are, but your words, your words will go and fish them out. Your word will go and destroy them. Everyone in the assembly, you better shape your destiny this week with the words of your mouth. Now, the floor is open to you. Speak before God. Make your declaration and do that very boldly. The things that you want to see happen this week, raise your voice. Don't mind who is hearing you. Don't mind who is listening to you. Your victory is secured as you make your proclamations to claim what is yours. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Now, if you can stretch your hands here, everybody, I declare that this week become your week of total victory. Yeah. Suffer no loss this week. Yeah. Whatever you have lost before now be restored to you this week. Yeah. Your joy is restored. Yeah. Your peace is restored. Yeah. Your glory and honor restored. All invisible barriers broken down before you. Amen. All who fight you that you don't know, they will come to the open to confess. Amen. Your mockers will see you made by God this week. Amen. Whatever you were struggling to get, you couldn't get before, get ready. This week, those things will be running after you. Amen. That long-awaited promotion is coming this week. Amen. That position taken from you, you have been robbed and denied of it they will not only give back to you, but in a higher dimension. Amen. I call you blessed. Amen. And I call you blessed. Amen. And no devil shall be able to reverse it. Amen. Therefore, say with me, I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm strong. I'm, strong. I'm, healthy. I'm healthy. Prosperous. Prosperous. Holy, unto Holy unto the Lord. Sanctified in his presence. This week, this week. Is, my week. is my week. Do you believe it? Declare it is done. It is done. To our first time worshippers, again, we are so delighted to have all of you standing before God. We thank God for your life. You are invited and you came. God will honor you in return. In Jesus' precious name. We encourage you. Don't make this your last time to be here, even though it's the first time. Be here with us on Wednesday for the midweek communion service and be here next Sunday. Powerful time, anointing service. Come with your friends and your acquaintances. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Please go with our church officials as you can see them beckoning to you. Church clap some more in their honor and the honor of Jesus above all. Thank you, Lord. Now I declare it shall be well with you this week. No good thing shall be withheld from you. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. It shall be well with you. 
find favor on every side. The people you don't know will serve you. And you will return with your testimonies. In Jesus' name.